This sermon is for those who are tired of being told that there is one way and one way only to show our love of Israel or to address questions of Israeli and American national security. Israel is the great response to the powerlessness and lack of agency that define the diasporic condition. Israel is a really good and a really important idea. In pursuit of this really good and really important idea, Israeli and the American Jewish leadership have done a lot right, and they have also made some terrible, terrible mistakes. The occupation of the West Bank is now in its 48th year. There are many serious, committed Zionists and serious, committed Jews, people who live in Israel, people who love Israel, who believe from their core, from our core, that the treatment of the Palestinian people, the restriction of their rights, the daily humiliations, and the stubborn expansion of the settlements threatens to destroy not only Zionism, but to make a mockery out of Judaism. At the end of the day, we need to acknowledge that Israel does not just have a PR problem. It has a policy problem. And the American Jewish establishment, the American Jewish establishment made a major miscalculation regarding this policy problem. For many years, our communal leadership thought we were doing the right thing by silently acquiescing when one Israeli government after another supported settlement expansion, thinking eventually, eventually this will put us in a position where we can trade land for peace. But the peace didn't come. Arafat dodged and evaded, Rabin was murdered, and now there are nearly 400,000 Jewish settlers living in the West Bank. There are many Israelis and Palestinians who are working together right now to change this script. It's important for you to know that there is a strong and serious and loving opposition to the status quo, both here in this country and also in Israel, among activists and artists and rabbis and even military specialists who have a very different sense about how best to support Israel. These are people who are fighting every single day for Israel to realize its great promise and its potential, to embody the dreams of their founders, a Jewish and democratic state. There's Avner Givaryahu from Breaking the Silence, who took me for an entire day last summer to Hebron. I wanted to see the cave of Machpelah, the ancient burial site of Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, and Leah. Hebron holds centuries of tears and memories and yearnings for the Jewish people. It is also the site of Baruch Goldstein's bloody rampage against Muslim worshipers in 1993. Today, Hebron is one of the most contested cities in the entire world. There are 650 Israeli soldiers guarding 750 extremist Jewish settlers who live in the midst of 200,000 Palestinians in Hebron. Avner was a paratrooper there for three years in the Israeli army, so he knows the streets intimately. He showed me the Kasbah, which was once thriving and is now shuttered. He showed me the new Jewish settlements that have been established in the last couple of years. And I asked him, Avner, why do you bother shuttling Israeli and American Jews to Hebron several times a week? And here's what he said to me. I do this for exactly the same reason that I served in the IDF as a paratrooper. I love this country enough to fight for it. These are the voices that I want you to hear. These are the Israeli Jews and the Palestinians who share our Jewish and democratic values, who are willing to fight tirelessly for justice and peace, and who are not willing to give up. How can we walk away? There is room for your voice in this conversation. We need your voice in this conversation. So today I'm asking something of you. Rather than walk away, you need to step in. You need to read and learn and visit. People will tell you that speaking against Israeli policies is dangerous and irresponsible because it's airing dirty laundry that only fuels the hatred of Israel and gives fodder to the anti-Semites. You can tell them that the jig is up. We hit the tipping point. Israel's rightward shift over the past many years is no secret. 
And after the Jewish terrorist attacks at the Jerusalem Pride Parade this summer, and then the firebombing of the Palestinian home in Duma, to not speak out against the growing threat of Jewish extremist violence is what's dangerous and irresponsible. It's important for you to know that there is both an organizational and an intellectual foundation for a thoughtful, progressive, engaged, and loving Zionism that honors the great promise of the state and is willing to fight for its better nature. So today, on this Yom Kippur, I beg you, please do not walk away. We need you to be a part of that conversation.